Nigeria and Nigerians will be known all over the world for corruption. Your name, Nigeria, will stink for corruption. But after a while, a new face will come, a face of righteousness. People from the nations of the earth will hold a Nigerian and say, we want to follow you to your nation and go and learn righteousness. This was a prophecy made over Nigeria by Sydney Grandview Elton of Blessed Memory in 1986 in a Christian leadership meeting. But Elton, as he was fondly called, was a missionary in Nigeria for 50 years, from March 11, 1937 to January 14, 1987. Austin Okachi in his book, the best is yet to come. Pentecostal and charismatic revivals in Nigeria, 1914 to 1990s, as such. No single individual occupies as large a place in the history of the Pentecostal and charismatic movement in Nigeria as Elton. If ever any human vessel could be given the credit of mentoring a revival and movement in Nigeria, between the 1960s to 1970s, it was he. Okachi further writes, Sidney Granville Elton was divinely ordained as a missionary, a prophet, and apostle to the world's most populous black nation. But Elton was born in England on April 16th. 1907. He became an orphan early in life. He lost his mother at age 12 to tuberculosis. A few years after, same sickness claimed the life of his father. On April 22, 1930, he got married to Hannah Catherine Elizabeth Elton, also of blessed memory. His wife was actually instrumental to his becoming born again. Sydney was 23 years old, while Hannah was 36 years old when they got married. In 1934, they were blessed with a daughter, Ruth Elton. History records that it was the story of Mary Slesso, the courageous female missionary from Scotland who stopped the wicked practice of killing twins in Calabar in 1876 that influenced the Eltons to be missionaries to Nigeria. Before Pa Elton came to Nigeria, he underwent three stages of revelations from God over a period of six years. These were A. In November 1932, he received a prophecy concerning him being used by God in a ministry unto others after God had laid hands on him in his own house. B. On July 14, 1934, that is two years later, God said he was sending both him and his wife to Nigeria. C. In 1936, at the meeting of the Apostolic Church Council in Wales, he was called to be a missionary. When someone prophesied, send my servant Elton to Nigeria. As observed by Boluwatife Onyedinron in Crosswatch Review on Facebook, and I quote, What was spectacular about the meeting at Wales was that one hour later, a similar prophecy was delivered 3,000 miles away in another council meeting in Lagos, Nigeria, in which someone confirmed by the Spirit, that one coming Elton would be an apostle among them. So Elton got this telegram from the headquarters at Wales, instructing him to telephone. After speaking with the president of the church over the phone, he faced the council at headquarters 
and was instructed to get ready to travel to Nigeria for a brief stay of two years to test the waters, so to speak, because the weather in Africa could be so severe to his wife and three-year-old daughter, Ruth, could end. A source added that Elton was so sure of his call to Nigeria and even the exact place he was to go, that is Elisha, that he named his dog Elisha. Sydney arrived at Elisha, a present-day local government area in Oshun State, Nigeria, without his family on March 11, 1937. However, they joined him in July same year. He arrived at the heat of Apostle Ayo Joseph Babalola's revival. As Oyedin Rafada observes, and I quote, But Elton arriving at such a time was convinced beyond doubt that God had not brought him to Nigeria to raise and nurture the apostolic church and her offshoots. God had not brought him down here to establish denominations. Rather, God had brought him because of the ongoing revival, because of the men in whom he wanted to pour himself into. God had brought him to establish life, put ends. Perhaps it was this conviction that made him declare widely, much later in 1982, saying, I want to warn you and serve you a notice that I am going to have my interest in Nigeria, whether you like it or not. I may be a white man, but this where my inheritance is. God has brought me to Nigeria, and nobody will take me back to a place where I've got nothing. When Elton arrived, he and Joseph Babalola forged a bond. A relationship consisted of instruction and guidance. As Elton at one time or the other served as a mentor to Babalola. The relationship continued this way till Babalola left the Apostolic Church with his associates, J.B. Babatokwe and others. Of noteworthy also is the fact that it was J.B. Babatokwe who accommodated the Eltons for years when they arrived in Nigeria. We should recall that Sydney came to Nigeria as a missionary under the Apostolic Church England. However, in 1954, the Apostolic Mission Board dismissed Elton due to the controversy he had created by inviting the Canadian leaders of the Letter Ray Movement to Nigeria. The Letter Ray Movement believed in the practice of imparting spiritual gifts through the laying on of hands. After the dismissal, Elton worked for Christ Apostolic Church, CAC, through the 1950s and 1960s. According to Christ Like Jesus on Facebook, even after the death of Babalola, Elton continued what he believed to be God's plan for him, to raise a new breed of leadership in the Nigerian church, who, powered by the Holy Spirit, would take the message of God's kingdom to the very ends of the earth. Okachi further went on to state that the severance from the Apostolic Church offered Elton the ample opportunity to interact freely with several independent ministries and ministers in the United States who were interested in promoting their visions and ministries in Africa. He created the platform for these ministries to come and hold crusades, teach and disciple converts. Through him, various literature, literature materials were freely distributed, and in some cases, financial support for the building of churches and the adoption of missionaries were extended to the church in Nigeria. Among the ministers who visited Nigeria, and who extended evangelism tools and resources to build up the Nigerian church 
too were outstanding. Gordon Lindsay was one. He not only sponsored the building of churches, he sent many useful literature materials and helped train some Nigerian ministers in his Christ for the Nations Bible Institute in Dallas, Texas. The other minister who helped to promote Pentecostalism and charismatism in the church in Nigeria was T.L. Osborne. Osborne was, was particularly interested in supporting and equipping indigenous evangelists. He provided them with literature, some of which was translated into various Nigerian languages, cassettes, films, projectors, portable generators, horn speakers, and megaphones. These were distributed free by Pastor A.G. Elton to indigenous evangelists as tools for evangelism. The education sector was pioneered by missionaries before government showed interest. But Elton being a missionary, therefore, played a meaningful role in this direction. He was the principal of teachers training college TTC Okeoye Elisha at the time. He also supervised the secondary schools in Elisha B. Opened up Nigeria for new ministerial frontiers. As pointed out earlier, Pelton prepared the way for Western preachers to come to Nigeria. He went as far as connecting some young Nigerian Christians with top American ministers. See, influence on Pentecostal leaders, students, and youths. Okachi points out in his book, The Best is Yet to Come, that Elton's residence was a rallying point for many who had the call of God upon their lives and who went to see him for counseling and guidance. He was instrumental in confirming to many their revelations, feelings, and impressions, whether they were of God or not. These leaders, youth, and students he influenced include late Archbishop Benson Edahosa, it's on record that Pa Elton was instrumental in identifying the late Archbishop Idahosa. He recommended Idahosa to Gordon Lindsay's Christ for the Nations Institute. It was there that Idahosa had his ministerial training. It was also Gordon and Elton who ordained Idahosa into ministry in 1971. As mentioned earlier, Pa Elton worked with Babalola during the Babalola's revival. Written tradition has it that Elton criticized Babalola's persistence and constant use of bell, staff, and sanctified water. According to Pa Elton, even though God showed Babalola these three things at the start of his ministry, as he claimed, they were spiritual symbols and not instruments of miracles in themselves. For Pa Elton, the bell represents witnessing and evangelism, the staff authority given to him to perform, and the sanctified water, a sign that his ministry would be characterized by healing and miracles. Babalola, however, refused Elton's interpretation bluntly. These were pioneer leaders of CAPRO, the first indigenous missionary organization in Nigeria. Alton provided CAPRO with evangelism materials and resources at inception. Once, he assisted in providing bicycles for them to use in rural outreaches. Dr. Ezekiel, the founder of Christian Pentecostal Mission, CPM, also drank from the spirit of Pa Elton.
Bishop Wale Oke is the present national leader of the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, PFN. He was the president of the Christian Union, CU, University of Lagos, from 1977 to 1978. He shared his testimony concerning Elton in Okachi's book as follows. Elton affected my life by a prophetic direction I can hardly forget. When I was in the University of Lagos, as an engineering and survey student, the hand of the Lord was so strong upon me and upon my life. I was so committed to the preaching of the gospel that I wanted to abandon my university education and go out and preach the gospel. If I had done that, it would have been a disaster. While I was still contemplating this, we hosted Pastor Elton on our campus. As he stood up to preach, he said, Some of you are under the mighty hand of the Lord. You are burning with a great passion to serve Him. That is why you want to abandon your university education. Don't do it. God has a purpose in bringing you here. When He begins a matter, He also finishes it. Even if you will not use your certificate at all, you stay and finish your studies. Otherwise, in the future, people will call you a dropout. They will say that you opted for ministry because you could not cope with your university education. Stay and finish your studies. God will use it to enhance your calling. That was a word for me because I was about giving up my studies for the ministry at this time. Pastor E.A. Adeboye also testifies concerning Pa Elton. He was a great instrument of God in the life of many people, including myself. I visited him toward the end of his life every two weeks and I spent only one hour. You can be sure we were not talking politics. We were not talking business. We were discussing the Lord Jesus Christ. I remember he said once that he regretted that he didn't meet me earlier in his life and I regretted that I had not met him earlier. But I thank God that the last days were profitably used and I think it's on record that the last major meeting that he had in 1985 was on this campground. He attended our convention and the following January he died. He slept in our little house and we had fellowship together. And I remember that his last sermon brought every one of us to the altar. General overseers, pastors, everyone. We all came back to the altar to cry before God and to rededicate our lives to the Almighty God. Other Nigerian ministers who drank from the spirit of our Elton include Pastor Austin Okachi, Senior Pastor of His Alive Chapel, Lagos, Barrister Mekan Wamba of Intercessors for Africa, Engineer Steve Olumuiwa, formerly Steve Okitika, of African Kingdom Business Forum, the Marketplace Initiative of Intercessors for Africa, Bishop Paul Mwachuku, Founding Father and Presiding Bishop of the first indigenous Pentecostal mission, Southeast Nigeria, Grace of God Mission International. Ruben is a mother of Christian Missionary Foundation, CMF. Tony Ebuna Chukudile, formerly of Fordile, of Children Evangelism Ministry, CM. Moses Aransiola, 
of Gethsemane Prayer Ministries, WF Komui of Deeper Life Christian Ministries, Willie Akoni of Peace House Boko Benue State, Late Apostle Jeffrey Dabibu Numbere of Greater Evangelism World Crusade. Indeed, the list of the people by Elton influence for God in Nigeria is endless. Elton was a prophetic voice to the nation of Nigeria. He made predictions on some national issues. For instance, he foresaw and predicted the present unprecedented level of unemployment. He predicted that the church in Nigeria was going to play a strategic role in advancing the kingdom of God all over the world. To effectively discharge his prophetic role, he edited a magazine, The Herald of the Last Days. He taught and ministered kingdom messages via the peace. Human legacy, Ruth Elton. The only child of the Elton's roots has been into mission since 1968. She is 88 years old. According to Church Gist, she followed the footsteps of her parents to become a, min- a missionary for life, laboring in Okene, Cotton Cafe, and other areas of present Kogi State, Nigeria. Her commitment to this work made her bear the cross of remaining single and at some point naturalizing to become a full fledged Nigerian. She pioneered the largest indigenous evangelical church among Iwira people of Kogi State and instead of serving as a general overseer, handed the church over to the people and moved on. Mama Ruth as she is widely known and called, is the founder of Coming Kingdom Outreach Elisha. She has retired from active missionary work and now based at Elisha, where she trains and sends out missionaries from to the unreached areas in Nigeria. She speaks Ibira, a language in Kogi State and Yoruba. Conclusion Undoubtedly, as Sidney Granby Elton played a very significant, if not the most significant role in shaping Pentecostalism in Nigeria. He continued on his mission till he passed on on January 14, 1987. Let us pray.